and uh, kicking it off with the horrible news everybody is well aware of by now, and that is the death of Jay Briscoe at the age of 38 in a automobile accident. Been uh, tributes throughout the wrestling world over the last couple of days. The uh, Dynamite Show, NXT, everybody on their Twitter. There was a Jay Briscoe Ring of Honor tribute show that was taped after the Rampage tapings tonight, which will be available very soon on Honor Club. And uh, absolutely horrible, horrible story. And uh, Dave, what's going on? I don't know. It's just a horrible, day. It's a horrible story. Yes. Yeah. So he was. Um, he was. Uh, was he? Was he? Was he bringing his daughters home from school? I had first heard that he was taking them home from school, but I think he was actually taking them to a cheer practice or an okay. after-school activity. Okay. And uh, he was. It was a two-lane road, and somebody swerved, basically into his lane and, and hit them head-on. The driver of the other car and Jay were were both killed. And his daughters were both very seriously injured. And I heard, I mean, I heard like pretty much no other details today past. It's a little better, but I know the oldest daughter, Grace, who's 13, um, couldn't move, I guess, from the waist down. And she had surgery done today. And the other daughter was also in, in pretty rough shape. I mean, they're in critical condition. So there's absolute... Uh, tragedy um so um you know um you know there's a lot of stuff you'll read you know as far as a lot of people were were um you know people people really liked him there's some really good comments i got uh basically a lot of stuff uh for tomorrow's observer from a lot of different people that uh wanted to comment on the the thing and there's actually some more that are probably going to be coming um you know, I mean, the the thing, I guess, that, that's just this, you know, it's funny because, you know, when we look at Jay, Jay, Jay was a very believable wrestler. He was a, you know, he was a natural at this. I mean, he was the first time I guess I would have seen him would have been the very first Ring of Honor show when he was um, was 2002. So it's almost 21 years ago. So um, he was, I think, uh, 18, right? And his brother was 17. His brother was in the corner because he was not allowed to wrestle, although they had, they had actually been wrestling since about the age of 15. And um, and also he was playing high school football while they were also wrestling. And he was a very good high school football player. And they both were. And their father was the coach. And then, um, you know, he got in and they were, you know, they great, great tag team. They uh, improved over the years and, um, you know, very, very exciting matches all the time. You know, whenever you saw the Briscoes, especially after uh, six, seven years in the business or six, you know, like, you know, by I mean, their, their tag team of the year in 2007. And from that point on, I mean, whether they were tag team or singles, they were, uh, you know, always, always in very, very good, hardworking matches, very physical. And, um, you know, the Jay did the tweet and it was a very unfortunate tweet, and, and I really believe from you know hearing from so many people that that he learned and very quickly that, that he made a big big mistake. He apologized, and um, that tweet really, in a lot of ways, um, you know, harmed both him and his brother's careers. When his brother didn't do anything, um, but they they you know WWE was very very interested in them and uh, kind of rescinded their offers and they so they were in ring of honor forever uh, they became fixtures in ring of honor but they were there you know really too long in a lot of ways although you know they were always pushed pretty well because they were always among the top talents there and and the 13 time tag team champions jay was a two-time world champion in ring of honor they held titles in new japan and noah and um plenty of other places and they were um they were signed you know by tony khan and he was unable um to get them on television and and you know if you watch night show and you were expecting something and i know a lot of people were something kind of the Brody lee show and obviously that didn't happen there was basically a 
um, there was a graphic at the start of the show, and then at the very end of the show, there was a mention by Excalibur. A lot of the guys had armbands, a lot of them, but but there was not any kind of big tribute because uh, they were not allowed by uh, Warner Media to do one. So what they 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 filmed a one hour show in Fresno tonight that'll be on Honor Club. They will be doing another tribute show, which will be the first. When they finally do the Ring of Honor television show, the first show will be feature a lot of uh, J matches, and the tribute show will as well when it's all put together. I'm not sure what day it'll be out, um, but there'll be another one. And then Supercard of Honor, there will also be, you know, kind of like a memorial to J on that show or something, you know, to honor J at the Supercard of Honor show in uh, Los Angeles. Um, in uh in late march at the uh the galen center usc so um there's that and um but like i said everybody seems to feel he learned and he if anything um you know he was you know you'll see some of the stuff but um ian riccomani had some you know really really interesting stuff that that'll be in the observer talking about you know jay and and um you know basically how he uh, viewed and was wanted to learn about gays and words and 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 things like that. That it was not just some, you know, you know he had to apologize, of course, but it was not some. Oh, okay, I'll apologize, but I don't really mean it. Like some people think, some you know, other people when they you know get in trouble or something sometimes do, but they felt that he really wanted to learn, and you know, he was a really good guy, family guy. Um, you know the. Um, the girls were were doing cheerleading and he would you know go and do cheerleading with them and put his hair in a bow like them and um he would take the first flight out you know sometimes after a main event match take a flight out at four in the morning so he could get home as soon as possible he did uh you know in the community obviously like today they um they shut down all the schools in their school district in laurel delaware and he he would do um he was coaching um middle school football he was just a guy that everybody knew and and you know the daughters people knew and it's a small community you know where they live and his his wife um was uh worked at the school his mother was uh, part of the school board and um his father was a football coach when they were in high school and uh you know that was uh, they're really well liked people, and um, man, it's just. Um, did you did you know um, them, him at all? I wouldn't say that we were close, but uh, I knew them. I'd seen them at, at many shows, and any time we worked shows together, we would talk. And they were great guys, and they'd done uh, shows here on the site several times, and uh, yeah, always just the absolute nicest guys. And hard, hard working guys. Very hard working guys. I saw them, uh, and I want to mention it was uh, Ethan HD and Schaff, because I told this story in Observer Live. But uh, they worked at a five show. It was the last time I saw them. And uh, they worked Ethan HD and Schaff, uh, local team. And I remember sitting there watching this match through the curtain. And I, I said to Matt Farmer, I was like, is this final battle? Because they worked so hard. And they just were brawling all over the place, and it was it was an incredible match. And then, you know, they came back through the curtain, and the first thing they wanted to know was, was it all right? How do we do? And then, you know, Ethan and Shaft came through the curtain, and they just hugged them and thanked them, and they were so thankful. And it was just, they were an incredible, absolutely incredible tag team. I mean, whether it was, you know, big shows, not big shows, indie shows, uh, Jay was a fantastic singles wrestler. He was a fantastic promo. Uh, the two of them as an act, I mean, they were so good. And it's not even really something that, you know, everybody talks about. I, I mentioned this today, too. It's like a lot of times when people pass away, you know, people go, oh, they were the nicest guy. And not, not that they weren't a nice guy, but, you know, you hear that after they pass away. But you would hear this about Mark and Jay long before they passed away, for years, 
people would bring this up, largely because of how they they could not work for WWE and they could not work for AEW because of of this tweet. And Isn't you know, a, for for you know, years, you know, I just you know, heard they're the sweetest guys. It's so bad what happened to them, and he's so remorseful for what happened, and he's he's done so many things to to try to make this right, and it doesn't matter. They're they're not going to work there. And uh, and people were upset about it for years. It's so unfortunate and so unfair in a lot of ways. I mean, I, the the tweet was terrible. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But there's no know, defending it, the tweet. No, of course not. Of course not. The tweet was terrible, and he wouldn't defend it either. You know, I mean, that's the thing. And um, you know, it's it's weird that like it basically like um, you know cost them. You know, I mean, they had the. It's, it's you never know how somebody will do in WWE. I mean, you don't like when they, if they were going to go to WWE, they could have been big, big stars there. Their style was completely, completely different from what WWE wants, though. I mean, it's hard hitting, reckless, and um, you know, just the character and everything. I don't, you know, I, I think they would be changed. And I don't know if they would have been changed for the better. I mean, if they were in AEW, they would have been the same Briscoes, and um, and they would have been they would have been great, you know, and they would have gotten a reason, you know, I mean, they'd been great. And look, look, look I mean, this last year, uh, their three matches with FTR were three of the best matches of the year in the United States, you know, even in the world, they were among the best. Um, I mean, best series, best view to the year, probably. And, you know, the, um, but it's, it's weird because it's like, you know, I'll see like, you know, Dana or Vince McMahon or, or, you know, of course, whatever, um, you know, so many, but so many people who did so much stuff, you know, you know, Alberto Del Rio, you know, I mean, really heinous stuff. Right. And they keep getting, you know, chance after chance and in, in, you know, in major things I watched, like when power slap started tonight, I mean, the first thing on the show, I mean, Dana's all over the show, but the first thing is, you know, the great thing about this is that if you don't like somebody, you can slap the shit out of them. And it's like, are we really opening the show with this this week? Is that, you know, I mean, it's like when he filmed it, it was it had a totally different connotation. But this is the same station. They will not let a tribute show uh, for Jay Briscoe go on, um, who just passed away that the entire wrestling world is mourning. Um, but they won't edit that line out of, you know, the show that aired... You know, that line was like three minutes after the show air. You know, the, the wrestling show ended was the the line on Power Slap. And Dana's all over the show and you're watching, you know, Power Slap we'll talk about later. But it's just so many things, you know, and listening to so much bullshit today, you know, about every different, every, all these things. And it's like these guys, you know, these guys never, and Mark never even did anything wrong. But, I mean, he wanted to stay as a team. And, you know, I mean, like... AW did want to push them. I mean, they wanted them, they wanted them to be on the roster. It couldn't happen. They wanted them on the pay per views this year. I mean, they they did headline. You know, you know, they were the big draws on the, the um, the you know, I mean, you could say Jericho maybe in the last one, but you know, I mean, they were big draws. They were the draw on the the second um, Ring of Honor pay per view that that Tony Khan produced, and that did a really good buy rate. You know, and it was it was the rematch based on the you know, excitement and significance of the first match. And, um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just weird to me, you know, thinking about like a tweet when you're really young. I mean, it's a tweet is a bad tweet, but it's a tweet. It's not like they sexually assaulted somebody. It's not like they were accused of, you know, something heinous that like they really did, you know, they physically did something heinous. This was a, you know, one brother does a really dumb tweet and 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 it was it was actually two tweets but the whole point is it's like it it um you know it hindered their career but you know on the flip side you know from when you look at it it's uh because of that because they didn't go to WWE and because they um you know they they got to be at home and they got to raise their kids, which would, you know, for, up, up until the pandemic, they would not have that kind of schedule. They would not have been able to, you know, he wouldn't have been able to, to do the things that he did. Now, this year, the nature of how the schedule in AEW is, is that they could have because the AEW schedule is not, you know, it's not that that bad. And you'd have plenty of time at home to do all those things. So, um, 
you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they, you know, the talent was there, um, you know, that the, you know, they were really, you know, for longevity and everything like that, they're one of the great tag teams of all time. And I don't know that they'll ever get the full credit for it because it was almost all in independence and ring of honor. I mean, they were in Japan, but it was, you know, it wasn't like they weren't like regular regulars in Japan. They, they went for a while with, um, new Japan, um, when the new Japan had the ring of honor relationship when they were very young, when Noah had the relationship with ring of honor, you know, they went to Noah and they were junior heavyweight tag team champions when they were smaller and younger. Uh, but you know, they were, they were like guys that were pretty much naturals. I mean, like from the very beginning, um, both of them, you know, just they'll do, they would do anything and they worked so, so hard. And, um, yeah, but I mean, from, from a human tragedy and everything like that, I mean, everybody, everybody was down and shocked and, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, you know, you kind of, there's a lot of warning signs out there about, um, you know, not taking life for granted and it can end. And I mean, it's like, you know, you know, being hit head on, you know, it's like nothing, it's not like it was a drug overdose or, you know, one of the many different things that we have seen with wrestler deaths. I mean, this was, you know, one that, I mean, there's, you know, no fault of his. It was in the wrong place at the wrong time at the wrong moment, and it's just horrible. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.